Myths for Beginners. Learn English with ease. How the myths began. Long ago, when your Earth was more than 2,000 years younger, there was a wonderful place called Mount Olympus at the top of the world that the ancients could see quite clearly with the eyes of hope and faith. It did not matter that the Greek and Roman people had never set foot on this mountain in the clouds. They knew it in story and reverenced the gods and goddesses who inhabited it. In the days when the myths were told, Greece was a more beautiful country than any that is the result of civilization today. Because the national ideal of the Greeks was beauty, and they expressed it in whatever they thought, or wrote, or made with their hands. No matter how far away from home the Greeks journeyed, they remembered with pride and love their blue bays and sea coast, the fertile valleys and sheep pastures of Arcadia, the sacred grove of Delphi. Those great days when their athletes met for games and races at Athens, and the wide plains of Olympia, covered and rich with the most perfect temples and statues that the world has ever known. When the Greeks returned, the most beloved sight that met their eyes was the flag of their nation flying at Corinth or the towers of the old citadel that Cadmus had founded at Thebes. It was the youth time of men, and there were no geographies or histories or books of science to explain to the ancients those things about life that everyone wants to know sooner or later. There was this same longing for truth among the Roman people as well as among the Greeks. The Romans, also, loved their country, and built temples, as the Greeks did, every stone of which they carved and fitted as a stepping stone on the way to the abode of the gods. But who were these gods, and what did a belief in their existence mean to the Greek and Roman people? There have been certain changes in two thousand years on your earth. We have automobiles instead of chariots. Our ships are propelled by steam instead of by a favorable wind. And we have becks that attempt to tell us why spring always follows winter, and that courage is a better part than cowardice. But we still have hard winters and times when it is most difficult to be brave. We still experience war and famine and crime, and peace and plenty and love in just about the same measure that they were to be found in Greece and Rome. The only difference is that we are a little closer to understanding life than the ancients were. They tried to find a means of knowing life facts, and of explaining the miracles of outdoors, and of ruling their pondict by their daily intercourse with this higher race of beings, the gods. On Mount Olympus, there was a gate of clouds on the top of Mount Olympus that the goddesses, who were known as the Seasons, opened to allow the inhabitants of the mount to descend to the earth and return. Jupiter, the ruler of the gods, sat on the Olympian throne holding thunderbolts and darts of lightning in his mighty hands. The same arts and labors as those of men were practiced by these celestial beings. Minerva and her handmaidens, the Graces, wove garments for the goddesses of more exquisite colors and textures than any that could be made by human hands. Vulcan built the houses of the goddesses.